Hey, what's up? Comic Construct here, just working more on this flat. Um, I was actually recording a video of going through and doing all these flats for this top panel up here, but for some reason my computer crashed, so I was actually able to save the flats, but I wasn't able to save that video. Um, so I'll do my best to get all the content back in here, but um, you did miss me doing some of these sections. Um, I'm using a really low quality image that I grabbed off of DeviantArt, so you'll notice that there are these little sections that I don't have selected, and that's just because of the pixel layer that I'm working with. Um, a PNG or JPEG, I can't remember which, and it all just kind of muds together, which is not what you really want. Um, so I'm just going to select this color, this color here. I have my bucket tolerance set down to 20, contiguous is turned off, and that helps me get the same consistent color on everywhere on this page. So. It's probably for the best that that video crashed, honestly, because, um, you know, getting these little guys here is a little boring. What do you want to see? You want to see the monster, right? Well, I'm going to finish up her with her little backpack here, and then we'll move on to the monster. So, um, I'm holding down shift and scrolling to be able to go around the, um, the image faster. Now, I'm just going to grab this whole backpack here and I'm not gonna worry about getting over her I'm gonna split the difference on these inks here and yeah I'm not gonna worry about these straps being a different color I'll get that later and don't need to be too precise here and this is why you use this lasso tool and you structure the way you're doing your flats um, because you want to be able to run over certain things you don't want to have to be super precise on everything you just want to be able to get in get out you're good to go you see I have half of this face here selected but when I actually go in I'll make this kind of a redder um, I have my bucket tolerance set to contiguous is off it's down to 20 and you'll notice that I missed a little section here. You'll notice that it colors everything. So I'm just going to put that color back on there. And there we go. And, you know, it's not super great. There's a little section here. You'll notice Affinity has these quirks. Like, Photoshop would not do that. Um, and that's, that's the reason why Photoshop is the industry standard. Um, Affinity is a great alternative. It's really cheap if, um, you know, you want something that you can work with where you just pay a one-time fee and it's good to go, then, you know, that's great. Um, otherwise, Affinity is not as good as Photoshop, so you're going to actually run into some issues there. So, I have all these little people selected, and if I actually just do, like, here, I'll, I'll put this on normal. Um, and you'll see that I have all these flats right here. And how cool is that, right? Now, if I put this back on to multiply, if I select that, then... Um... Selects all of these cloths. Pretty neat, right? Alright, so I'm gonna work on this big monster guy. And what I'm gonna do is actually I'm just gonna get the whole monster selected. I'm not gonna worry about all of these little dots here. We can make that gross later on and cool looking, but um, I'm not gonna worry about these supports that are put onto him. I'm just going to get this big monster um, and I'm just going to call it at that and then I'll actually go through and make it a little more detailed. So I'm going to stop the recording and then once I've had that all done I'll put it back together and I'll show you 
Well, I'll show a little bit, and then I'll stop the recording. But I'll actually go through, and I'll show you why I've done certain things, and how you can set certain things up, and actually make your flatting a little bit faster. Alright, yeah, this Twitter has got to go. And there we go. Alright, so, you know, you just want to split the inks here. So, I'm going to go through, and I'm going to get this totally flatted. You've seen a few sections, and then later on in the video, you'll actually notice how I'm going through. And Alright, so I'm back, and I got this, uh, you know, pretty much fleshed out right here for the general ink. So I'm going to go in and do some more. Um... I'm going to turn off this ink layer just so you can see what it'll look like. And as you'll notice, I've got these little sections right here, like on these people, that I just didn't do. And I would argue that it's not totally necessary since the inks are so heavy, but you definitely want to go sure, go through and make sure that you don't have that happening. Like, I actually did that right here, and you can always just, you know, turn off your ink layer, zoom out, and take a look at everything. Um, right here, you'll notice that I have that little section, but, um, it's not really visible. Also, like, this is not a high-quality image, so it's kind of tough to get those little sections. Um, <clears throat> what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna work on this monsters, I'm gonna work on this tusk, the teeth, and the nails all in this little section and then I'll actually go through and do more and more and more and so what I'm gonna do is since I've already got this guy selected on his own layer I'm just gonna make sure not layer but I have him lassoed out and everything I'm just gonna make sure that I get all these sections that I want to color and I'm gonna just do that real quick now it's kind of tough to know. Um, I'm going to make his face a little bit different color, but it's kind of tough to know based off these inks where the teeth are. But that looks good to me. And then I'm going to do these tusks up here. So get that going. And when you're flatting, it's like you really want to make sure that you can make it as quick as possible. So what I like to do is I like to do, like, the wide parts, and then that way I can just snap to it all the way across and just get the whole section. So I'll show you what I mean right here. Um, I have this one here, and then what I'll do is I'll just snap that right there, and then I'll just go through and delete these sections, because I don't need them. And then... I've got most of my work already done. Uh, then I'll just go through and clean these up. So, this is really the first step in doing your coloring process. And you can get hired as a flattest, uh, or a flatter, rather. Um, you just go on, like, Gutter Zombie, or on Reddit comic book collabs, and you just, like, show your work, show your rates, um, I would say that for a beginner, um, like me, for instance, if I was gonna go onto Gutter Zombie and post these flats after they were done, and, you know, I've cleaned them up to make sure that they're indicative of the quality of work that somebody could expect, like, I probably wouldn't put this one up there unless I spend a little bit more time on it, but, um, I would go through and actually just say like hey listen I'm a beginner flatter and I'm gonna charge you six dollars a page or five dollars a page or something really cheap and you know just start building a portfolio there um, build up trust and then you can start charging more and then you know um, if you're not getting hired back for projects it's probably because your flats just aren't that great so what you want to do is like and this is for anything. Um, I learned I learned all this doing web development, um, this process because marketing yourself is a lot like um, is similar for a lot of different fields. So you just want to be as honest as possible, and you want to make sure that 
I'm going to refer to it as clients because that's how it is in my web dev. But when you get a client, you want to know what their expectations are for the project. So, like, you always want to make sure that there's no misunderstanding. You're going to want to make sure that you know what they're looking for and be honest in what you can deliver. And if you're just starting out and you're not that good, then tell them that. Let them know. That way they won't be unhappy later. And when they get the flats and they approve it, they'll say, well, you know, I kind of figured that this wasn't going to be, like, a master colorist working on this. But at least they'll have everything that they need to move forward in their project. And as a flatter, you'll have more experience. And, you know, as soon as you get paid once, you're a professional. That's how I feel. Um... I think there was um, a famous writer who said, if um, if you sold a five-word short story, then you're a professional writer. And I forget who that was, and I'm probably misquoting that. But um, it's true for everything. Like, I sold my services um, as a web developer back when I was first starting out. I did an entire website like, a redesign of an entire website, and it it was, like, oh my god, like, you could not believe how much work this was, but I only charged them, like, 50 bucks, and it helped me build a portfolio, and got the word of mouth spreading, and, you know, just kind of said, like, hey, listen, um, I know that I'm new here, and everything, um, I just want to get more experience, and people are always willing to help you out, if you're willing to help them out. Um, <clears throat> so I got these here, I got the teeth and the tusk, and I didn't put it completely at white, I put it at white with a, some purple hues in it, um, because it's hard to get a real, like, sterile white, unless you're in an environment that's like a doctor's office or something, so you never want to have just plain white. It's just not going to look weird, and you're going to notice that right off the bat. But I'm going to go through and color these later, so for right now it doesn't matter. Um, What I want to start doing is I'm going to show a couple different techniques um, while I'm doing the rest of this guy. And you'll see he's got like these bumps here, this gross little section over here, and I really want that to look kind of like a... Um, what would they call it? A, um, a turkey's, like, um, I forget what, but you can imagine what a turkey has on its neck. So I actually just went up, I turned the feather up to 15 pixels. Eh, I'm going to turn the feather down to about 3 pixels. Because I want these to be circles. And it just makes it easier on me. Oops. Alright, and then I'll turn the feather back down, and I'll just go ahead and clean these up a bit. Oops. There we go. Bingo, bango. Good to go. And I'll just start doing this. Get all these gross sections here. I want it to look really grotesque later on, so that's why I'm doing this. Um... And if you get a color that says, like, hey, I want you to use these local colors, um, that's what all these are. So, let's say these guys are naturally green, these bands are naturally yellow, and their cloths are naturally orange. These would be the local colors. So, then the colorist, all they have to do is go in and, you know, change the shadows and the lighting, and just, you know, lighten it up or make it darker, however they want to do it. Um, but then they can use that base color because that's the local color and they don't have to worry about actually going through and doing all that arduous coloring so if you ever get a colorist who asks you to do something like that just say like yeah yeah I got no problem with that or if you do have a problem with that just say no uh, pretty easy um, I'm gonna do this make this a little wider go all the way out here and get this. Let's 
expand that out and I'll actually go all the way down here. And that's gonna help me to keep this looking as consistent as possible. Um, you'll notice that I am definitely missing sections. I'm gonna go through and clean it up later, but I wanna give you a general idea of how you actually go through and make these more detailed, because with flatting, what you're basically doing is you're just carving out sections and applying colors to it. And, you know, it helps a colorist. Like, professional colorists, they all use flatters. Um, so there's always going to be, be a need for a flatter, because it speeds up their work by, like, three, three, four hours a page they can cut down on because they don't actually need to go through and select everything, because what you're doing is you're isolating all these things. And that's why you make them the same color, because that way, when they go through and, and grab them, see, more, more of affinity being a weirdo, but when you go through and grab them, you actually um, make their job a lot easier. So, um, in... In programming, we would call it setting and getting. I think in coloring, they call it just um, the grab and cut method. Um, so, all right, that's that's a little. Yeah, I'll get this section right here too. Um, just because I know I'm gonna color this, so I kind of have an idea of how I want it to look. And all right, so these inks are from DeviantArt, there's um, an artist, I think he goes by the name Synths, but I'll put the link in the description box if you want to get these inks and work on them too. Um, I would recommend just reaching out to a color or an artist and just saying like, hey, do you have something I can work on? Um, I'm actually waiting on some PSDs and TIFFs right now, so hopefully in future tutorials we will not have to deal with all this. And... That's pretty good. I think that's fine. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab this base color of this big lurking monster. And I'm just going to make it a little bit more red. Just so it's different. And there we go. And later on, I'll actually go through and texture that a bit that way. It looks a little more gross than it does right now. But that's pretty much how I want him to look. Um, like, for instance, the lighting on here is really weird. Um, but I'm going to do some more work on this. Um, for instance, like, I'll cut out all the wood over here. And I'll make this um, all one color. And then I'll go through and I'll make... Um, these, these straps over here, all one color, and then I'll um, just pretty much get this the way that I want, but I don't want this to be a two hour long video, so um, if you ever need help on Affinity, um, basically I hold down shift, and then I scroll with my mouse, and if I scroll up, that lets me go to the right, if I scroll down, it goes to the left, if um if I hold control and scroll, it'll zoom in, zoom out. And if I hold alt with the lasso tool, it lets me delete a selection. So, pretty, pretty convenient here. And you'll find a way to make your coloring and your flatting go a lot faster. And this is what I like to do. I like to just grab big sections and then carve out. But, um... I'm gonna just, again, grab this color, and then just make it a little bit lighter. That way it's, it's noticeable that there's a difference. There we go. Alright, so I'm gonna do a lot more work.